أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على مفتاح باب الله رب العالمين سيدنا محمد المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله المطهرين وصحابته والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد Tonight, inshallah, we will be uh, quoting the third parable from the Qur'an from Surah Al-Imran, and that is verse number 117. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the chapter that we'll be reciting today tackles a few issues mainly focused on the Battle of Uhud and the Battle of Badr. The Battle of Badr happened in the second year after the Hijrah, and the Battle of Uhud was in the following year. And the Battle of Badr was not a revenge from anyone. It was rather an attempt from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to block, the, to block the, the trade route of Quraysh to Asham, since Quraysh has already confiscated a lot of properties and money from Muslims. They driven them out from Mecca, took all their belongings. A lot of the Sahaba lost their properties. So the Prophet وسلم, after moving to al Madina, as a strategic way of annoying Quraysh, the Prophet وسلم, tried to block their trade route, business route from Mecca to Asham, and Quraysh were forced. It was a strategic maneuver to stop Quraysh from annoying and persecuting Muslims further. So Quraysh were driven to change the route from al Madina all the way to take the desert route that goes through Najd. Anyway, uh, in, an, in an attempt of revenging from the Prophet ﷺ, Quraysh launched a, a war which uh, culminated in the Battle of Badr. And the Prophet ﷺ with 313 Sahaba defeated Quraysh in the plain of Badr. And the Quraysh lost many of their top leaders who were actually persecuting Muslims, including Umayyah ibn Khalaf and Abu Jahl and so many others. And therefore, they had to come back the following year to revenge for their defeat, for the defeat that they had to undergo. Uh, the, the Prophet وسلم, forced their noses to be stuck to dust the year before, so they had to come back next year, and they were, uh, they were ready for revenge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the Battle of Badr, the little number of believers at this time. And at, at this time of, of the Battle of Badr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned that Quraysh have gathered there, as the Prophet وسلم, said in his dua, Allahumma inna hadhihi Quraysh qad ja'atka bi qaddiha wa qadidiha. Oh Allah, this is Quraysh, they have come to you with all their belongings. Because what Quraysh have done in the Battle of Badr is they gathered every single individual with them. They even took the women behind them. And they took the women behind them to play the deafs and sing war songs so that they go ahead and they feel brave. And it was a, a practice and a tradition in Arabia that in order to be brave in the battlefield, they will take their women and children. And sometimes the women, in order to feel that they are afraid of the, losing their women as, as captives of war, so they would, they would fight till the last man, as they say. So Quraysh had to, uh, to do that, and they gathered every single thing in Mecca, and they went out, their leaders, as the, and then the Prophet Sallallahu turned to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, asking for support, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala supported him in this, in this battle. But to cut the, the long story short, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, in the middle of, of the of long description of this battle, says in verse number 117, مثل ما ينفقون في هذه الحياة الدنيا and we said yesterday and the day before that we will be talking about the parables of the Quran. The ayat that will have this word, mathal, they are like. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is the translation of the, of the verse, the parable of what they spend charitably in the life of this world is, that, is, that, is like that of a wind in which there is a bitter cold that affects and thus destroys the tillage of the people who have wronged their own souls. For God has not wronged them in punishing them, but rather it is their own souls they themselves have wronged with ungodliness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an example here of the disbelievers and the money that they give out and they spend. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an example of people who spend without sincerity. 
In this ayah, example of people who spend without sincerity, they spend out of vanity, they spend out of showing up, they spend out of, 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 of just display. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these individuals, their spending, their charities, will be like the, uh, the crops. A person puts seeds, puts effort, puts money into growing these crops, and all of a sudden, overnight, a, a, a wind that is full of bitter cold comes and removes that, these crops. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds to that by saying, anfusahum. It is them who wronged themselves to show that it is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has done that to them. It is actually them who have done that, that to themselves. So the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the parable Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to attract our attention to here is don't spoil the outcome of your good deeds by not having sincerity in them. Yesterday and the day before we spoke about other things that would lead our actions to lose their effect. One of them is lack of consistency, we said the, the day before yesterday. And yesterday we talked about the lack of, of having the good qualities, like just doing it out of the situation, in response to a situation, rather than having the good quality. And today we're talking about lack of sincerity in doing good deeds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these individuals who are lacking sincerity, and they have not accompanied the people of sincerity, and they, have learned, they haven't learned sincerity, as Ibn Ajiba says, لا تنفك أعمالهم من علل ولا أحوالهم من دخل. Their deeds will not be free from defects and their states will never be, be free from confusion. So we need to learn in our actions and in our deeds how to remind ourselves with the intention, with the purpose. And the intention in every action is like deciding the purpose for your action. Why do you want to do this? And they... If, if you don't know why do you want to do things, then there is no point in doing them. If you do an action plan for any project, the first thing that you should look at is what is your aim? Al Ghaya, what's your objective? What's the outcome of that? And how is that going to benefit you? The Prophet said on the day of Qiyamah, the first one that will be put in hellfire, the first individuals that will be put in hellfire are three individuals. One of them is a scholar. The other is a, a person who spends, and the third is a person who dies in the battlefield. So the scholar will be, will be put forward, and Allah will question him. Why do you think you've been in hellfire? He said, I don't know. I spent all my life teaching people. He said, no, you taught because so that people will say he used to teach. He's knowledgeable. Another, the other individual, Oh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, Ama wa qad qeel, it's already been said. And then the same person, the person who spends, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, you spent so that people will say he's generous. He's a good person, he's charitable. And the person who dies in the, bat in the battlefield, Allah will tell him, you died in the battlefield so that people will say he's brave. He's brave. This is very crucial and important, brothers and sisters. Because before Islam, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought this deen to people, they used to do loads of good things. Arabs were generous people, Arabs were brave people, Arabs were people of uh, dignity, but they used to do that out of hamiyya, out of love for their families. They used to do it out of love for praise. A person will be charitable so that people will go out and sing poetry in his praise and say, you know what, all the birds of the sky can eat from his food just to say that he's so, so generous, right? So they had good qualities. But when Islam came, Islam said, look, all good qualities have to be re-established on an akhira purpose rather than a dunya purpose. When you have a, when you're smart, you should plan your things long term. But having a short term plan, that doesn't work, doesn't pay you, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this similarity between charity and crops made charity and crops similar to each other. The loss of the value of charity is similar to the loss of crops because crops combine two things. They combine money, you buy the seeds, and you pay for the land, and you pay for the, the, the labor, and it, it also includes effort. And same is with your money. Your money is payment of your life, and you are toiling to collect that money. 
You're tiring yourself and exhausting yourself to collect that money. So if you spend all your life spending, taking that money with toil and blood and sweat, and then you spend it, which is another trouble, because you have to resist your ego. You have to resist your attachment to money. And then after all of this, you do it for the cheap purpose of showing off, then you lose its value, you lose your effort in dunya, and you lose your effort in akhirah, that's a big loss, isn't it? They mention, and I conclude with this, they mention to Imam ibn Asakir, rahimahullah ta'ala, and Imam ibn Asakir was a, a scholar of, of a sham. They said to him, why is it that you are so dignified and arrogant? He said, I'm not arrogant. Because they saw that in the presence of rich people and, and, and rulers, he's very dignified. They, and then he said, They say to me, you are arrogant and you, are, you, you shy away from people. It is only that they have seen a man who doesn't want to humiliate himself. ولم أقضي حق العلم إذ كنت كلما مضى بدا طمع صيرته لي سلما. Then I have not fulfilled the value of knowledge. The knowledge that I have studied for years and I've accumulated for years, I wouldn't be fulfilling the right of this knowledge if I humiliate myself in front of everyone. أشقى به غرسا وأجنيه ذلة. Am I supposed to tire myself to compile it and now I humiliate myself? No. When you get knowledge, you should be respected for that knowledge. You should glorify that knowledge and respect that knowledge. Same thing, if you have to do something good and you have to do a charity, make sure that this charity doesn't lose its value because you have already tired yourself in collecting this money. Make sure that when you spend it, all of these efforts don't go in vain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the best of deeds.